Today I want to talk a little bit about time management if you have a repair shop. I'm going to combine a couple of concepts in this video. The first one is time management because it's very important. We sell time. Time is just like anything else. You are not going to sell somebody a computer for zero dollars. Uh, when you waste your time in a repair shop, you might as well just be selling people stuff for free because what we sell is time and our time is very fucking valuable. It's the most important and one of the only assets that we have in a repair shop that is worth anything. The second thing I'm going to discuss is why technicians lie. In the Why Technicians Lie video, I focused on the idea that most people lie because consumers as, as a whole are willing to pay to have something fixed, but they are not willing to pay to have a specific service done. If I tell somebody, I reassembled this machine from, uh, from top to bottom, I took everything out of it, and I put everything back in it, and now it works, and it's 150 bucks. They're going to be like, what? But if I tell them, yeah, I replaced X, Y, and Z because those parts were failing and getting a little rusty, um, that's 150 bucks. They're going to say, okay. That's a reason technicians lie. And the other reason technicians lie is to save time. I'm going to be discussing that in this video. The third thing I'm going to be discussing are relative ethics, meaning you did something wrong, but you did something wrong because it allows you to do something right down the line. And the one wrong thing you do may actually allow you to do so many right things that it kind of cancels it out. A lot of people have a black and white idea of right and wrong, but they don't realize the practical ramifications of doing what they find right. Let's get started. Time management is more important than anything in this business because, again, we sell time. You wouldn't sell somebody a battery for free. You wouldn't sell somebody a charger for free. And you shouldn't sell your time for free. Now this directly conflicts with something that I agree with more than anything, which is the free estimate. Because by definition, a free estimate is selling your time for free. There's a big risk involved. Beating the clock is important for any repair business, whether you run a car repair shop, computer repair shop, watch repair shop, you're charging a specific amount of money to do something. If you can do that thing faster, you have time for more jobs. If you have time for more jobs, you make more money. If you spend too much time on a job, you don't have time for other jobs. You don't get money from those jobs, you make no money. So a couple of important concepts. The first, I used to have a schedule for myself that had 15 minute increments. At 2 o'clock, I will diagnose this computer. At 2.15, I will fix this computer. At 2.30, I will order these parts. At 2.45, I will discuss this with the parts vendor. At 3 o'clock, I will diagnose this next computer. At 3.15, I will fix this next computer. At 3.30, I'm going to go to lunch. At 3.45, I'm going to take a crap. It just went on and on like this with 15 minute increments. I gave myself 15 minute increments for a lot of different things that could have taken me a couple of minutes. And the reason I did this is so that I wouldn't get stuck. If any particular thing on this list or it was something that I could not do or something that took longer than 15 minutes, I would not do it. The reason is, a lot of people have a problem, again, with the, with the tunnel vision. They get stuck doing one specific thing. And when they get stuck doing that one specific thing, because it's taking them longer, or there's something else wrong with it, or they just want to figure this out, they wind up not doing the rest of the jobs. By not doing the rest of the jobs, or by pushing off these other 15 jobs for this one fucking thing, you're not going to get 15 things done. Now, even if you do get that one thing done, you've only gotten one thing done. Whereas if you had skipped that over to the end of the day, you could have gotten 15 things done. Proper time management and focusing on what it is you're going to work on is the most important part of your day. It may not sound nice, it may not sound ethical, but when I look at my incoming shelf, and my incoming shelf has a lot of fuck shit in it. Let's get the camera up here. See all this fucking crap? I'm looking for a couple of things. What in this can I get out of here as quickly as possible? Which jobs here make me the most money? Because once I have the padding of the jobs that are going to pay me the highest amount of money, and once I have the padding of this is going to not take up a lot of my time, I now have time for the rest. So if there are two jobs in there that are going to take me five or ten minutes to complete, I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck about first come, first serve. I care about getting those ten minute jobs the fuck out of here so that I have time for everything else. Let me talk about the imaginary hourglass that comes with each repair. The stopwatch, the clock, the counter, the timer. Each one of these computers on this table has a timer attached to it. Each one of these motherfuckers is going to call pissed off that it's not done at a specific time. Each one of these people is going to call requesting a status update at a specific, unique time. And they have every right to do so. I am working to beat that clock. I am working to fix this shit or to have an estimate done on this shit before they call me.
So, the, if I can get a couple of these out of here in five or ten minutes, that's less clocks. Your goal as a technician is to beat the clock, but also to have the fewest amount of clocks possible. So if you have 30 machines in your shop, you now have 30 clocks. I want to get rid of as many of those as possible because that is a bottleneck. Each time somebody calls, I have to stop what I'm doing. Or, my receptionist has to stop what they're doing. Now, when I was a one-person business, when somebody called, I could be on my Bluetooth and working, but for the most part, I would work a little slower if I was on the phone with somebody, or if I had to look up their status, or if I had to see if I could find something for them. So every time you get, the clock beats you, your time is wasted. And as I said, your time is worth money, and you cannot afford to have it wasted. So if you have five or six jobs, by all means, get the ones that are the easiest the fuck out of here fast. Now, on money, if somebody has approved, that is always worth more than a job where you're doing an estimate. I'm sorry, somebody who has money in my hand is worth more than money they may be putting in my hands. Now, you are going to be more comfortable when you are financially secure. And when you are comfortable, you are going to do better work. It, it, it's just the way it is. If you have 30 or 50 jobs behind you that are waiting to get done, you're going to be a little more stressed out than you will if you had maybe five or three. So it's a good idea to get things out of the way that can be done quickly. And again, with money that's with jobs that are approved, those have to take precedent. Because again, you want to get as much of those timers out of here as possible. If any of the things in your to-do list for the day are going to, are, are taking more than 15 to 20 minutes, put them to the end. Do all the fuck shit at the end and just reorganize your list. You can make another list for the next day, which is all just the fuck shit jobs that were giving you trouble today, and give yourself more time for them. Maybe give yourself 45 minutes or an hour for each one. Start each one of these jobs off in 10 to 15 minute increments. And then get all those done. Whatever cannot be done in those 10 to 15 minutes, put those in the, in the pile of jobs that are going to take 30 or 40 minutes. Make a separate schedule for yourself. Now, let's go on to the lying. Why technicians lie. Another reason technicians lie is to save their time. As I said, when you offer a free estimate, what you are doing is you're selling your time for free. Let's talk about two ways you can do an estimate on an A1181 with no backlight. So here, we charge $75 if it's the inverter, $75 if it's the wire, $125 if it's the inverter and the wire, and $200 if it's the screen, and about $225 if it's the inverter, the wire, and the screen. Now let me talk a little bit about how you can quote these jobs. You can tell somebody, here are all the different possibilities. I will do a free estimate on your computer. This is the ethical thing to do. You tell them, you'll tell them exactly what it will cost, and these are the options. You can't really ask somebody what they're willing to pay for because that creates a natural distrust. Because if you tell somebody, I'm willing to pay 200, and now they charge you 200, you're gonna wonder, the customer's gonna wonder in their head, did he even look at it or did he just tell me 200? Now, you, at the same time, if you tell somebody all the different options for the A1181 with no backlight, and uh, they tell you something like, okay, but you'll call me before you, uh, you do anything, right? And they say that three times, and you actually spend 40 minutes opening it, and it's a fucking screen, or it's the inverter and the wire, which is the more expensive option. You're screwed. You just wasted your time, and they're not going to say, okay, I don't want to pay for that. Put it back together. That's another 20 minutes to reassemble it. Now you've wasted 40 minutes of your time. That's the honest way of quoting them. You tell them it could be 75 if it's this, 125 if it's this, 200 if it's this, or 225 if it's this. That's the honest way of quoting. Let me go about the practical way, the way where you cover yourself. And this is an important concept in uh, doing estimates and quotes. You say, this is a screen issue. There will be 200 plus tax. On rare occasion, it could be the screen and the inverter of the screen and the wire, and that can go up to maybe 225 plus tax, and you gauge the reaction. Now you gauge the reaction. If they say no, okay, whatever. You, you, you lost uh, somebody you didn't want to spend the money. But if they say yes, now you're covered. If it's the wire, you can just go ahead and do it. If it's the, uh, the inverter and the wire, you can go ahead and do it. And if it's the screen, you can even go ahead and do that because, again, you are covered. The price that you quoted them covers everything that could possibly be wrong when you do the estimate. Now, where it gets, I'm okay with that. Where it gets truly grimy is when you look at somebody and you go, okay, it was the screen and it really was just the inverter wire. Again, 90% of the people out there, if somebody approved 200, they're sure as fuck not calling them back to tell them it's only a $75 problem. I am in that other 10% that often will actually call somebody back and tell them, 
hey, I know I told you it was a $200 problem, it's actually a $100 problem, congratulations. That's up to you and your personal ethics. Now let's go through relative ethics. Because as I said, I believe certain things are ethical to do, but I want to talk about the concept of relative ethics, which is the idea that you have a finite amount of good that you can do. And you can only spread this good throughout so many people. If you try to be, do the best and the most right, if you try to do the best, most ethical thing for everybody, you will actually wind up doing the ethical thing for nobody. Let me explain this. Let's say that you wasted 40 minutes of time. Now, your labor rate is going to have to go up. You're going to have to figure out how to subsidize that. You cannot eat that loss. If you eat losses as a business and you eat enough of them, you will go under. So your labor rate may go up from, let's say, a labor rate of 60 or 100 an hour to 100 to 150 an hour. And that's to subsidize the amount of time that you made no money off of. So now everybody else who's improving jobs is going to be spending more money. Each one of these people is going to spend a higher amount of money because my labor rate has gone up. Should this person be paying $300 instead of $200 just so I can be 100% honest and do a 100% full estimate or diagnosis on a machine? That's up to you to decide. That's the idea of relative ethics. I personally, with my ethics, I feel bad charging this guy an extra $100 when he's willing to spend money. I feel bad charging him an extra $100 in labor just because somebody else came to a repair shop with the idea that they were going to spend 20 bucks or less to fix their problem after I spent 40 minutes diagnosing their computer. So that's the idea of relative ethics. And also, let's say there's one, two, and three machines that uh, all are brought in by people who are cheap and don't want to spend any money. Let's say I spend uh, 20 minutes on one, an hour and a half on another because it was a real pain in the ass, and a half hour on another. That's two hours that gets taken off the other clocks. Again, I told you, each repair that comes in here has a clock. It's counting down to when that person is going to call in and be pissed. So let's say I wasted two hours of time. That's two hours taken off of 30 clocks. Now let's say out of those 30 clocks, uh, 15 of them count down. Now let's say I get 15 phone calls wondering why there isn't an estimate. 15 phone calls wondering why it's not done. Those 15 phone calls are going to keep me from doing work. Let's say each one of those calls is an average of 90 seconds. That means that I've wasted 20 minutes of time. Now this just keeps going getting worse and worse. I've wasted, 15, I wasted 40 minutes or 2 hours of time doing these free estimates that I'm not going to get paid for. That caused me to get 15 phone calls, which wasted 25 minutes of time. That 25 minutes of time was just enough for one other person to call and piss that their shit wasn't done. It's like a domino effect. Like, one of these clocks starts ringing, now all of them starts ringing. And now I have a ton of fucking pissed off people. The way I was able to run my shop as a one-person business, getting 10 to 20 tickets a day two and a half years ago, was I was really good at managing these clocks. And I was really good at coming up with what ethical gray area I want to be in when doing a free diagnosis or when doing a repair in order to do the greatest good by the most amount of people. I, I do not want uh, to suffer in any one particular area. I don't want to tell everybody their repair is going to be four, three hundred dollars just to cover myself. I don't want to charge everybody three to four hundred dollars to fix their computer just to subsidize the labor that goes into the free estimate. But I do believe in using your brain to come up with the compromises that work best for you. Everything we do in this business is a compromise. If I didn't want to compromise, I would just match Apple's pricing and say $750 for everything. Or I would match tech service pricing and be $600 for everything. But that's not the kind of business I want to run. And I want you to understand that when technicians lie, they're not doing it because they want to be a fucking piece of shit. They're not doing it because they want to make the most amount of money. They're doing it because there's just no point in spending 40 minutes on something that you know somebody doesn't want to spend money on. And again, when somebody looks at me and says, three times in a row, you're going to call me before you do anything, right? When they say that three times in a row with that worry in their voice, I'm not opening their computer. I want this to be on the record on camera. If you say that to me three times in a row, I'm not opening your computer. I'm going to give you a phone call in one to two hours. I'm going to tell you it would be 50 to 150 bucks to fix your computer. I'm, I may come, whatever issue it is, I'm just going to come up with a random price in my head based on that. And 99.9% .9 of the time, they say, fuck no, I don't want to do it. 
And that saves me the 40 minutes of opening it. And that 40 minutes that I saved is what I put into everything else. That's why I can offer same day turnaround on so many jobs that other shops take two to three days to do. And I like being able to do that. Again, my concept as a business owner on how to run my business and how to do my customer service is based on who's the dick, who's being a dick. The guy who's walking into my repair shop who wants to spend 10 bucks to have his problem fixed, I'm not really focused on uh, giving him the best customer service experience. The guy who walks in who reasonably wants to spend a reasonable amount of money to fix their machine, if they have a $100 problem, they're okay paying $100. If they have, maybe have a $200 problem, they're okay with paying $200. That's the guy I want to give same day turnaround to. That's the guy that I want to fix their machine for one or 200 bucks for when everybody else is saying 350 to 700 And that's who I cater my business to. And sadly, this does require making some compromises, and I'm okay with making them. The thing is, you have to figure out how to make those as well. So going over this from the beginning, time management. Time management is very important as a technician. Make your list, make your schedule for the day in 15-minute increments. All the stuff that was fuck shit, put that to the end of the day. Don't keep working on something if it's taking up your time. Just move it to the end. Move it to the end of your schedule. Even if the end of your schedule, and again, you don't have to make your schedule for the entire day. Just make your schedule for what it is you have to do and say 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, or 20, or whatever it is that's going to take you to do all these jobs. Then, if it's taking you longer, move it to the end. Then make your end of day schedule, which will be maybe 40 minutes or two hours for each job. And don't let the entire shelf of work that's behind you get backed up because of one job. Because again, each one of these is a timer. And because you're working really hard to stop one of those clocks from going off, you're going to cause all of them to go off. You don't want to be in a situation where that one clock going off, where that one person calling in pissed off that it's not done, is causing everybody in front of him to call wondering why it's not done. It's okay if a clock rings, but you don't want that clock to cause a domino effect. You want to keep the domino effect from happening. Let's go on to why technicians lie. Again, technicians don't always lie because we're just these pieces of shit that want to make as much money as possible. Oftentimes, technicians lie because the practical reality is that when we tell the truth, we waste our time or we are argued with. It's unfortunate, but it is true. When I tell somebody the exact truth, I waste, I very often waste 40 minutes of my time. Whereas when I tell a practical lie, 99 out of 100 times, I save myself from a situation where I would have wasted 40 minutes of time. Uh, relative ethics. Something may not be 100% right. It may not be 100% correct. But I want you to think about the amount of good that you can do when you do something wrong. And this, again, this, this can be a little bit of a slippery slope, but when you do something that isn't 100% honest towards one particular individual, you may be able to do something that is honest and that is right towards 50 other individuals. So please, think about relative ethics when you're doing things. Do you really want to help one person at the expense of 15? Again, in an ideal world, I would be able to provide same hour service at rock bottom labor rates to everybody who walks in the door. But that's just not the practical reality of running a for-profit repair business. The reason I'm successful is not because I've always done the 100% right thing. It's really, really, really easy to just, uh, just say, I'm going to do the right thing by everybody uh, in every situation, and I'm going to do the right thing all the time. Why doesn't everybody just do the right thing all the time? The reality is that there are always compromises to be made. You have a finite amount of resources and a finite amount of time, and you can only do so much good with the resources that you're given. Practical, intelligent business owners that have a good practical mindset will figure out how to take these finite resources and do the most amount of good with them. Hopefully this has been a little bit helpful and insightful to you, and if you have any comments, questions, ideas, feel free to post them below.